we can lead and do what we're capable of doing to build a better society for everybody. I see trees of green Red roses too I see them bloom For me and for you And I think to myself What a wonderful world My name is Ron Bailey. I am the head of the Department of African American Studies at the University of Illinois campus at Champaign-Urbana. What are you doing? Oh, I'm Jackie Parker. I'm, actually, my name is Jacqueline. I've been called Jackie since I was a, first entered into high school. And I'm a resident here of Kingsland Walk. Kingsland Walk. And I'm trying to, I, I, I remember hearing Dr. King uh, speak uh, about he had a dream. And I have not been able to find a copy of his speech so that I know I can remember everything that he said. Mm -hmm. I just remember he said he had a dream one day about little black children and what they could do together. And Jackie, that's a very important introduction because Dr. King, that's the part of the speech he delivered uh, at the Washington, at the, uh, in Washington, at the Lincoln uh, Memorial during the big march on Washington in 1963. Um, and I think it was, you know, it was that speech that came after the Birmingham, after the Montgomery bus boycotts, the success of the boycotts and the increase in the amount of civil rights demonstrations around the country that catapulted Dr. King to, you know, the visibility and the popularity that, that all of us came to, to see and understand during that period. So that's a very important speech to have heard when you, you heard it. My, uh, I have a, a personal introduction to him when I was a, uh, a student at Michigan State in 1963, he came to our campus to visit in part because his, the education director from the Southern Christian Leadership Organization, his organization had taken a couple of years off from teaching to be his education director in Virginia. So he was, came to our campus uh, several times as well. What else do you remember about him, Jackie? I was trying to remember where he actually uh, gave his speech. I, I, I have a feeling that I, I heard him speak personally, but I can't, I can't remember exactly where that might have been. Was it the Washington Memorial maybe? I don't know. I, I was thinking about it uh, uh, maybe at the church. What was it, Ebenezer? In Atlanta? Maybe that's where it was. Ebenezer was his, was his, it was really the church that he came to pastor later on, but when he was in, when he gave, um, he went to Montgomery when he left college in Boston. He went to Montgomery to be pastor at a church in Montgomery. And it was the, that church, I think it's Dexter Avenue that he, um, you know, very new to Montgomery, had just gotten to town and they were looking for somebody to lead the uh, bus boycotts that Rosa Parks had kicked off. And Dr. King got appointed by a Pullman car porter named Ed Nixon, um, Ed Nix to, to be the key organizer of that event. And that was, I think that was in 1955 as well. Does anybody have a uh... Or was his speech, uh, is his speech of, as he gave it available uh, to somebody like me that I would like to read from time to time myself? Absolutely. We can arrange to send you both the text of it as well as the video of it because it was, it was the speech that even today, that's the speech that people play most of the time when that's they. I remember. Absolutely. So we'll, and we'll hear a lot of that speech over the next week because the King Holiday is for this year is on the, the 17th of, um, of this month. 
And it, it, he, he was killed on April 4th in Memphis, Tennessee, as he was um, lending support to the garbage workers strike in, in Memphis. Um, you know, and we all know that story of how he was assassinated from a, ba a balcony uh, and so on. And then they had a funeral in Memphis before they flew him to Atlanta. Um, and in Atlanta, he had two funerals, one at what was his, 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 his church, Ebenezer Baptist, and then a march to Morehouse where he went to college uh, and had another big um, outdoor memorial at Morehouse College uh, on, I think it was the 9th of April. And then the reason we're celebrating the holiday is that in, uh, it's, it's been pushed for since 68, but it was really later on when Congress uh, passed a resolution and got enough states to endorse so that um, Monday following his birthday, which this year is the 17th, uh, that becomes the day that the National King holiday is celebrated. What is the brief history of Martin Luther King Day? Well, you know, it's, it's um, again, it was people have pushed for Dr. King to be celebrated since he was assassinated in 68. Um, but, you know, if you think about how many people didn't agree with what Dr. King was doing, uh, it's no surprise that many of the states, particularly Southern states and a couple other states refused to endorse the national legislation to celebrate a day in, in his honor. Eventually they settled on the seven, they settled now on the Monday that followed his birthday. Uh, and that's why we celebrate it generally around the 16th or the 17th of each, each January, that Monday following his birthday. Yes, but I want to know what, the, uh, what, what were the core beliefs of Dr. King? But that's, that's a good question. I think, I mean, the way I remember Dr. King and his core beliefs is that he was simply asking that the nation practice what it's, it preaches. You know, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident. All people are created equal, born with certain rights. But we know that the history of, of slavery and racism, racism in this country blocked most slaves. I mean, it was not until the 13th and 14th and 15th Amendment that slavery was ended. You know, And so um, what Dr. King was simply asking for is that we should uphold the principles that are in the US Constitution. Uh, I think that's that's the core of his belief. And he was also committed to what we know as direct action, meaning that we can't just simply sit back and wait for people to do that. And so he studied social movements around the world and was very moved by what Mahatma Gandhi had did had done in uh, in India. And so he adopted those principles called Satyagraha love power and use that to mobilize people around the United States to actually under direct action to put pressure on the government and other people who were discriminating against black people to, um, to, to uh, overturn those laws. So I think those are, you know, one, the, the fight for equal rights and justice for all and then two, using direct action, sit-ins and protests um, to bring that about are the two of his core beliefs. Uh, do you believe that as a society, we have made progress toward his ambition since his passing or have we faltered? Well, that's a very important question because I think we're in the midst of a big faltering right now. I mean, if you follow the news, um, when this is shown next week, um, what we know is that uh, President Biden and Vice uh, President Harris um, went to Atlanta to give a major speech about the struggle over voting rights because more than 30 or 35 states have in the last year passed legislation 
to change the way votes are cast and counted across the United States uh, and have uh, passed other pieces of legislation that everybody sees will make it much more difficult for black people to vote. So yes, we, we did make progress since Dr. King was killed. I think one of the, in terms of voting rights, one of the most important uh, victories was what happened uh, in the 2020 election when, um, especially I'm from the state of Georgia. So in Georgia, its citizens elected uh, Reverend Warnock, the minister of the church now that Dr. King preached in years ago uh, and another um, colleague of his, Joe Ossoff, uh, and they became the two senators from the state of Georgia, one black, one Jewish. And that tipped control of the US Senate into the hands of the Democrats. Uh, and since that time, um, a lot of effort has been put into trying to overturn um, or to put more barriers in people's ability to vote. So yes, none of us can deny that progress wasn't made, but we also have to recognize that in 2021, there was a big campaign to try to overturn some of that progress so that um, black people and brown people and young people, women don't have as much voting power as they have had um, since the 1960s. What, uh, what do you think of Dr. King would feel about current social movements such as Black Lives Matter? You know, I think I think Dr. King would be in support of those movements. Um, you know, we talk about strategy and tactics, you know, and basically Black Lives Matter wants many of the things that Dr. King wanted, you know, um, justice for all, equality of opportunity, so forth and so on. And Dr. King was important to the movement because he believed in rallying everybody who wanted to support the cause. Sometimes people call that the big tent approach. And when he did the March on Washington, remember he sat down with not only members of his organization, SCLC, but he sat down with the Congress of Racial Equality, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, the Urban League. Um, he reached out to students and young people and women. He was actively in touch with um, the Latinx community. So Dr. King was broad in his vision uh, and wanted to cooperate and collaborate with people who shared the view that the Constitution should be actively in support of everybody's rights. So Black Lives Matter, you know, as new generations come onto the scene, they will have other uh, approaches to how they want to do this. Uh, and so Dr. King would be the first to say, one, let's listen, let's try to understand what these young people are saying, uh, because we were young and militant at one point. And let's try to come to a point of view where all of us can join together and support the cause. So I, I think that he would be firmly in support of Black Lives Matter and, and similar movements. But that and, that and that is not to say that he would be more, uh, even less, he would not be in support of the need for people of all races and nationalities to come together. And I think that that's what people try to do sometimes. They try to pit different groups against each other. Um, and that doesn't, that doesn't serve the movement's interest. So he would be very outspoken against trying to narrow the movement to just black people, for example. I'm interested in what exactly do they mean when they say civil rights? What so, are civil rights? Civil rights. Um, so the notion of civil rights goes back to the US Constitution. Um, and when the Constitution was adopted, um, you know, it had certain clauses, but what the Constitution didn't do was to abolish slavery. 
And so it's always been a block on the image of the U.S. to talk about we hold these truths to be self-evident that all people are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain rights, life, yeah, living, all and all and right. uh-huh. But then to turn around and say, but black people are not in, are not included in that. We're not included among, you know, all people. And so the notion of civil rights uh, came to speak to those rights that all citizens should enjoy. So it took the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, which gave all citizens the right to due process and equal protection of the law, and the 15th Amendment, which gave all citizens the right to vote. So those are, that, that's what people generally mean when they talk about civil rights, the rights that are guaranteed any citizen, any person born in the United States, certain rights, because they were born in the U.S. What can a person such as myself do to achieve his Dr. King's dream? Well, I, I listened to your point earlier. You said that you think you heard him speak at some point, right? Maybe at Ebenezer. So what was going on when you heard him speak? speak or when you knew he he was alive and did you go to any of those uh, demonstrations or protests um, to hear what message he was trying to deliver? No, I think I was so young then it it was not, uh, it didn't register with me that these, these things were important. I was just there as a part of, because I was black and I knew that we were not treated the same as whites. So I was just part of that support group and young enough not to really understand the importance of what I was showing up for. Well, you had the experience that I had because my parents actually thought I was, when Dr. King spoke in Savannah, Georgia, near where I'm from, they thought I was too young to go. Uh So I remember fussing with them, but they left me home and they went to Savannah to hear him talk. But, you know, we were always watching on television and seeing what Dr. King was doing and um, seeing our parents and grandparents and uncles and aunts supported. And we knew that it was important because it involved our rights, even though you know we probably had a five or six year old understanding of what those rights are all about. And I think that I think that's the answer to the question that you asked today, I think. You know, they say that when George Floyd was killed, when he was murdered in Minneapolis, uh, somewhere between 15 million and 26 million people around the United States turned out for the largest protest that's ever been held in this country. And I think the reason so many people turned out is that millions of people saw this guy being murdered on television, right? And people instinctively knew that that's wrong, that's not right. Nobody should be treated like that. And so the reason that there were protests all around the United States, all around the world, where people felt very strongly that that was not right. And I think today we all have to support those movements that are trying to change things that we know are not right. It's not consistent with the the laws of the Bible. It's not consistent with the laws of the government. Uh, and I think that that's the that's the best way to support movements to for for everybody to come to their understanding. I like the Bible verse. I think it was part of the Sermon on the Mount: "Do unto others as you would have them do unto you." And that's kind of simplistic, but I think that what Dr. King was trying to do was to trying to um, win over all of the people in the United States. Is, to that moral principle that that's how we should be <clears throat> leading our lives. And, and so finding the movement that is trying to change things so that we're doing unto people what we want done to us, I think is a good um, rule of thumb. Uh, I have another question. Are there any current leaders that you admire that are in the vein of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So I think there are many people today who are operating in support of the kind of principles that Dr. King represented. 
Um, and we will see a lot of those people turn out uh, during Martin Luther King Day 2022, um, especially now that we have 30 or more states that are passing legislation that's gonna make it difficult for black people, for brown people, for women, for the elderly uh, to vote. I mean, there are laws that are being passed that saying it's, a, it's against the law to hand anybody a bottle of water when they stay in, stand in line to vote. Even though the reason the line is so long to vote is that they've closed down many of the voting booths that were scattered throughout various cities, right? So there are all kinds of ways being put into place to block people's access to the ballot. And that's fundamentally anti-democratic. Um, and so uh, there are a lot of people who will be supporting the move to keep democracy accessible uh, to all. And then we could look at various other um, movements. There are movements to um, get wage increases for low paid workers who are not earning enough, even though they're working you know, 40 hours or more a week to take care of their families. There, there, there are movements to support better health for workers who come here from other countries. Um, so, uh, and we'll see a lot of those people in action. I know that uh, Dr. King's son will be involved in some of the marches next week, Reverend Al Sharpton um, and his National Act Ac Action Network will be involved. There are, are people like Stacey Abrams, Georgia, who are very active in registering this and uh, came very close to winning the governor's position in the state of Georgia um, and who will try again this year, she's announced. So there is a wide array of people, not all who are believing the same thing, but all of them who are basically supportive of fighting for democratic rights for everybody. Well, I thank you for all of this information. Do you think there's anything else that you could tell me that would uh... Help me to remember that I remember this. It's like it's like once I I heard first heard all this when I was many years younger, and I always likened uh, the brain to a uh, an onion. You peel back the skin one layer at a time, and you'll find you'll find information that you forgot that you knew. And I I I have that uh, onion still up in my brain. There are things that I probably would say, oh, I should have asked him this, and I didn't remember. Well, I, I think you've touched on something very important, and that is we all have a responsibility to try to read and study and keep up with what's going on so that we can come to understand it and know the facts and understand how we feel about it. Uh, because I think if we do that, then we will end up trying to do something not exactly as Dr. King did, but trying to do the right thing in terms of some of the important issues that are that are being check this conversation with you and your fellow residents in the senior citizens facility because you guys have experience with all of this. And I often send my students to interview senior citizens so that the, as a young person, they can see that this was not all about Dr. King. Right. There are people in communities all across the United States who were in their own way, uh, they were fighting for civil rights. And it's, it's always good to have these dialogue between younger people and older people so that younger people can, you know, better understand the issues and direct their energies uh, in a way that will have positive outcomes. I appreciate the time you've taken uh, away from your busy schedule to answer all of my questions. And I, I'm sure that I will go away with you say I should have said. I hear you. And I'll leave you my phone number so you will call me. And I will, I will pack it up. I have, a, for example, I have a book on Medgar Evers who was killed in Mississippi where I, I, I you remember that name? Yes. Uh, Merle Evers asked me to do a book for young people on Medgar's life. And I did a, a pamphlet really, but I will make sure I send a copy to you and your colleagues uh, and maybe have some there that they could, they could look at. What do you think is the most important teaching of Dr. King's that we should take away from this moment? 
you know, I don't want to be simplistic about it, but do unto others as you would have them do unto you works for me. I mean, I, I think sometimes we get too theoretical and too highfalutin, but doing unto others as we would have done to us and our family is a golden rule that we should all follow. And I, I really agonize and stay awake at night wondering why we're having so much trouble getting more people to understand that's fundamentally what this movement is about you know, equality and justice for all uh, so that we could all lead the lives that we can lead and do what we're capable of doing to build a better society for everybody. So I think that that's, to me, that's what, that's an inspiring message that I get excited about whenever we have discussions of, of Dr. King and the civil rights movement. Well, I thank you very much for your time. And I, 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 I have little notes, little, little, little pads, little notes scribbled on it. Nobody would be able to decipher but me, and I'm trying to keep them in order and not scribble so that I'll recognize my own handwriting at the end of this conversation. Well, that's another lesson for young people. I like the way you take notes so that you can keep up with what's going on. Well, you know, it make, I found out taking notes is very important, and it makes the people that I deal with uh, uh, a little uncomfortable because they know that they can't tell me, so I told you this and said, no, you didn't because this is what you said. And when I read it back to them, they're more careful about the information they get me or we give need, me. We need more people like you around today to remind people of some of the discussions that they are trying to ignore. Oh, yes, <laughs> and they will do it. And I thank you so much for your time. Jackie, good meeting you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And I think to myself, what a wonderful